Hello friends, very good morning to all of you. So yeah, like we have completed a SAML and binding types in PF21. Uh, now we are jumping to PF22 that is uh, service provider versus identity provider initiated single sign on. So I'll just uh, give you draw some diagram. I'll just show you something, right? So you will understand exactly what is the meaning and how exactly it works, right? And uh, for testing part in real time, we can just uh, wait for the PF25 when we do for the uh, go for the SAML application onboarding. So in that, like that session will be very long, like PF25, because we just need to do a uh, lots of testing there, right? Like we can just go for our va va validation of the, uh, our directory server, our validation of policies, fragments, selectors, whatever we created, right? So we can go for all those testing, right? So once we create an application and then we can go for all those testing and in that only we can cover the service provider uh, SSO or also like identity provider initiated single sign on and we can understand exactly what is the difference there, right? And we can just, uh, yeah, go through a few other things also, a few troubleshooting, we can see that like for SAML case, how we can do that from logs or maybe from uh, using some kind of tracer, right? So we can understand those things uh, on PF25, right? So that session will be long, but uh, in this session, we can just, just I'll just uh, draw some diagram and just make you, I'll just help you to understand exactly what is the meaning of this, like service provider initiated single sign-on and uh, identity provider initiated SSO, right? And what is the basic difference between that? So yeah, let's begin. So let's quickly discuss on uh, SP initiated SSO versus IDP initiated SSO. So what is the, sorry. So let's quickly discuss first SP initiated and the IDP and then you can able to understand the difference. So first let's talk on SP initiated. So by the name only you will understand many things here, okay. So what we talk about in the binding, we can relate that also. So SP initiated means like the journey of my single sign on started from the service provider end. And also there are other parameters we need to look, but yeah, in the initial, we can say the journey of my single sign on, it starts starting from the service provider end. So for an example, like I have a service provider, like for an example, you can take any example like Salesforce application. Okay. And you have the identity provider. That is Pingford redacting. Pingford basically just uh, authenticate from directory and all. I'm not drawing that, but yeah, just understand that part. And then we have the browser. And here the user. So in the SP initiated SSO, so what exactly happened? Like you have some URL, for example, abc.xyz.com. Okay, you are just accessing this URL where like in the browser, you're simply just going to the browser, user is going to the browser and accessing SP initiated URL that basically that initiate that's going to initiate the journey of single sign on from the service provider end, like from the Salesforce end. So user just type abc.xyz.com, then the DNS will resolve and take the user to the SP. Now as the SP don't know who the user is, it's basically not handling the authentication. So it will just, create or generate a SAML request, SAML request, SAML authentication request you can say and then just bind this using HTTP redirect binding if we can say HTTP redirect binding and send that request to the browser and browser to the IDP. Now you can say that we can't send the request to anywhere in the IDP. Because again, uh, ping federate acting here as IDP have some endpoints defined for consuming the SP initiated SAML request. If we talk about SAML especially, so it have some endpoints defined. So you need to send the request to that endpoint only to so that like this flow will uh, go right. This flow will like work. This SP initiated SSO will work. That's why we need to beforehand like we need to exchange the metadata like these two party have to exchange the metadata so that this party will get the endpoint values addresses and the identity of this and this party will get the identity and other addresses of that uh, other party. So basically they can get exchange their metadata and so that they can get the values of other application like certificates endpoints and all right. So now you have those values in using those values only like SP basically sends this SAML request to that address to the endpoint address of the SP initiated SSO. SP endpoint I will say something. So being for IDP have some addresses. It's nothing but like IDP slash SSO dot something SAML2 in the case of SAML right something like that address. 
So that address it's defined already. So SP knows that address because in the exchange of metadata they have all the endpoints defined. So they know okay if this is SP initiated SSO. So user went to the browser, then browser to SP, like to the Salesforce application. Salesforce application just generated a SAML request. Yeah, bind it with the HTTP redirect and send that to the browser, and then browser just uh, send to basically to the endpoint of the IDP, which is basically going to consume this SP initiated SAML request. Okay, so this is the endpoint is very important. Once you receive the request, then basically Pingfed will just go for the same thing, right? It will just verify the user from the directory and generate a SAML token, binding with the HTTP post. Okay, HTTP post as we have look understand in the previous sessions. So just bind it with the HTTP post and send that SAML response to the browser and then browser to the application. Now again here also, right? You can't send the response to any place. You need to again SP also have their endpoint defined where they need, where they are going to consume the uh, SAML response or token and then authorize the user based on the val val uh, validation of the uh, information uh, of the user came in the token. Correct. So basically SP first verify. And SP have I, I just as I told that uh, there is a already beforehand exchange of metadata using that uh, IDP have uh, already having the values of the SP where I need to send the response and all the addresses. It's already configured in the application of under IDP, so that basically IDP has sent that response to the browser and the browser has sent the response to the particular address. This address is defined. Okay, this address is called as a adjacent consumer ACS. Uh, the, the address is basically called as the ACS URL. So using that. URL, you are just sending the response to that address so that SP is basically going to consume that token from that address only and then going to authorize the user from their own database or whatever the validation they have built. So in this case, what is exactly happening? Like if you can see that like browser just sent the request to the SP, SP has generated a SAML request and then SAML request sent using HTTP redirect binding to the browser and then to the IDP. Now you can see here, as I told you, IDP have the defined endpoint address. So if you are not sending that request to the endpoint, to the correct endpoint, then what happened? Maybe your SSO will work because if you send to some other addresses, we can talk later also, but you can miss something because you generated a SAML request and in that request you have some uh, parameters you added. You added some, some details which you want SP to look, which you want IDP to look for that. Like for example, you, you just uh, defined authentication contacts, you defined the uh, SAML subject uh, uh, like uh, the format, something like that. So you defined few important thing under SAML request and you want that request to be read by IDP and based on that IDP has to take action like authenticate the user and then generate the response but IDP has to look to that request and based on that only IDP has to go for an authentication and like that and for the token generation like that. So how it can happen if you are sending the request to the correct address. If you're not sending the correct address, maybe your SSO will work with some other address uh, if you send. But yeah, the, the main thing you're going to miss because you are just passing some important thing in the request and you want those all information to be read by IDP, like in this case, Pingfed read. And then on the basis of that, Pingfed can take an action and then give me the token, the SAML response token. So that's why the address is very important and the flow will just like the same. Just the browser will go to the SP, SP will just send the SAML request to the browser and the browser to the IDP endpoint, the IDP will just read the values, authenticate the user, generate the SAML token, send back to the SP. That's done. That's all about SP initiated. Now let's see in the IDP initiated what is happening. It's just the difference of a journey and there are a few other things which we understand uh, in, in next sessions. But the flow, we need to understand the flow and yeah, uh, the parameters, what I talk in the request, what we are passing, that's all things are important because we want those information to be read by IDP. We, can't, we, are, we, we, we don't want that as IDP can ignore my message. That's why I just be, uh, I'm just using SP initiated SSO, right? Okay, let's talk about IDP initiated SSO. Okay, in IDP, what is happening? Again, you have the same case, like you have the Salesforce application you have the ping federate IDP and you have the browser you have the user so what is happening by the different by the word only IDP initiated SSO that means my single sign on journey is going to start from the identity provider end that means this user have some address which th using that address user just went to the browser and that browser basically sent the user to directly to the pingfed idp because the address is it's nothing but a 
the address of the ping federate uh, uh, that the connection you built in the ping federate ping fed basically given you that address so that the person or the people can initiate the single sign on journey directly from the ping federate side you are not supposed to go to first salesforce then to ping fed you can also have an option that you can initiate your single sign on journey directly from the identity provider side that is from the ping federate so ping fed will give you the idp initiated single sign on url or address using that user will put that in the browser and then browser will take to the take the user to the ping ping federate identity provider in that case what is the missing thing is happening like i'll just tell you but let's me let me complete this first so the request went to the browser and browser to the ping federate idp ping fed idp what ping fed idp is going to do the same thing what you see in the isp initiated like it have just integrated with some directory server and some mfa solution so it will just authenticate the user based on the request came uh, uh, to the ping fed idp and then after authentication uh, yeah as per the request like user just trying to access some application which is integrated with ping federate right so basically ping fed just handle the authentication based on the configuration of the application in the ping federate and after it has generated a saml token bind it with the http post and then send to the browser and as per the configured uh, configured application you have the consumer address it just send that address uh, using that address it basically send that uh, response to salesforce type acs address i will say so ping federate authenticates the user generate the saml token bind it with http post send to the browser and then browser to the uh, salesforce address the address which basically configured in the ping fed side that's the assertion consumer service address now salesforce receive this token it will just look for the uh, user information in the token and then very verify from their own database and then authorize the user as per their rule to access in the application so in this case also you can see that single sign on is working fine the difference with the journey only that here your journey is basically started from the ping federate side only and then you went to the salesforce and you are just doing your work now what thing you are missing in this case a small thing you are missing here yeah Uh, what what you are exactly missing here that in the earlier in the previous flow you can see that when in the case of sp initiated sp is basically generating a saml request and sending to the ping federate idp in that request itself ping fed uh, the salesforce is passing few parameters which salesforce wants ping federate to read and after that take a action right so maybe if there are few information which is important in terms of authentication in terms of building the token like that so or maybe uh, for forceful authentication or maybe there are few other parameters which we can pass or relay state parameter like that so those parameter service provider wants ping federate to read and based on that take a action so in that case sp is doing some control over ping federate whereas in case of direct this idp initiated you can see you are directly jumping you have the url where you have the query parameter for the application id so you are simply directly jumping from browser to the ping fed idp in that ping fed it is not looking that what you are sending what ping fed is looking okay you are just trying to access this application and for that application i have some authentication mechanism and the token generation defined under ping fed it so based on that i will just authenticate the user generate the token and send back to the salesforce then salesforce will do the like authorization part correct so in this case ping fed it is not giving much importance to the request because it is not it just will have the application id so just it will read the application id and do the things just uh, verify the user just send the response uh, as per the whatever the application design you have configured in the, in, the, in the ping federate whereas in case of sp initiated sp have some control it can just send some parameter in the request and using that it can just perform it can just uh, perform some uh, like using that it can just ask ping federate to perform some action as i told right relay state parameter forceful authentication you have you have authentication context you have like uh, saml subject uh, uh, value like that saml subject format sorry so there are few parameters which you can control by sending that request to pingfed because pingfed has to read pingfed can't ignore in the case of sp if you are sending that request to the correct address of pingfed right and then pingfed has to read that and based on that pingfed has to take a action and in the case of idp initiated it's nothing like that it simply just request came ping federate okay look okay uh, the user is trying to access application a let's see uh, it's definitely the application a is configured with ping federate if it is not configured ping federate can give you the error page but if it is configured ping federate can go simply in the ping federate configuration and check okay this application is configured for which authentication and for how token generation is going to happen just do the things and then send the token back to the salesforce so that's a difference right i think you understand uh, now 
but yeah definitely in the application a saml application onboarding session we can just integrate a application and we can just try to i'll show you how the testing part of this and yeah maybe i'll just try to uh, modify something in the in the request parameter and i'll show you those things so it will really help you to understand okay now let's uh, jump to the next session that is i think uh, we have released it uh, let's try to it's very important again maybe if uh, many of you have some confusion also like the uh, the beginners uh, so let's quickly jump and we can just clarify that and then we can just talk about the metadata and then we can jump to the application onboarding and the testing that's a long session going to happen but yeah we can just go for that okay thank you